I'm in northern Iraq with Dr. Midja Rashid from MSF, Médecins Sans Frontières. Dr. Rashid has to choose which refugees escaping from ISIS get the chance of life-changing surgery in neighboring Jordan. There's one patient who might be an urgent case. Abid Ali was wounded escaping from ISIS in Mosul. Dr. Rashid investigates the damage. He had handed rope. That's why we, we, we think about uh, nerve injury. The US-led coalition, which included Britain, dropped around 29,000 bombs to help Iraqi forces drive ISIS from Mosul. Abid and his family were in the crossfire. Abid and his family lost everything. He can't work without use of his arm. Dr. Mijia won't know if surgery will help until she sees an X-ray. To get one, he'll have to go to a clinic in the nearby city of Erbil. We are concerning about time. If he has nerve injuries, a golden time to intervene is between three to six months. So we are now five months after the injury. So he's got one month left. Yeah, after one month, uh, maybe we will lose uh, the nerve. The nerve injury, they, they have the, the urgent priority. Abid is now incapacitated. He can't use his arm, which means he can't work. He can't provide for his five kids and his wife. I'm hoping and wondering if he qualifies for treatment at the MSF hospital in Amman. In this war zone, Abid may struggle to reach the clinic that can x-ray his arm. But it's his only chance for a normal life. I'm traveling to the MSF hospital in neighboring Jordan that Abid and so many others are desperate to reach. The Moasa hospital is the only facility in the Middle East to offer free reconstructive surgery to people wounded in the region's wars. Today, there's a celebration for two of the patients who finished treatment. There are more than 200 patients. A third are Iraqis, wounded in the battles against ISIS. Another third are casualties of Syria's civil war. The rest are from the conflict in Yemen. Now the Yemenis are showing off their dance moves. It was just amazing to see people just throw their clutches to the side, get up and dance, and not dwell on their injuries or the pain that they feel. One of the partygoers is 18-year-old Bilal Ahmed. Like many Yemeni patients, he's a victim of an airstrike by the Saudi-led coalition that's supporting one side in Yemen's civil war. With MSF's help, Bilal is hoping that he'll be able to walk again. He was cycling to the market when he was hit by a bomb dropped by a Saudi plane. Bilal's mum, Haifa, is here with him. His treatment with physiotherapist Sajdi Ma'alla is at a vital stage. The surgeons have put metal plates in his leg. They're tightening the plates of his leg lengthener, which is notoriously painful. And you can see from the look on his face that it's really hurting him.
The aim is to lengthen Bilal's leg by 12 centimeters. Soon, Sejdi needs Bilal to put weight on his injured leg. But it will take courage. Later, I catch up with Bilal and his mum. This is a photo of Bilal before the accident, and he had a very cool afro. His mum believes this is the Saudi airstrike that injured Bilal. A Saudi-led coalition has fought Houthi rebels in Yemen for over two years. Here, they were targeting a building occupied by Houthis in the city of Daiz. But the blast hit many civilians in the neighboring streets. The UN says more than 5,000 people have died from Saudi coalition airstrikes in Yemen. In the last six months, British sales of military equipment to Saudi Arabia have topped 1.1 billion pounds. Bilal was in a coma for three months. Once a top student, the force of the blast damaged his brain, affecting his speech. Getting Bilal a referral and a passport to travel here took his mum a year. Soon he'll have to face the painful challenge of trying to walk with crutches. I'm meeting more patients. This is 11-year-old Mansour Nasser from Yemen. He's hoping he can walk again. Dr. Ali Ani, an orthopedic surgeon from Iraq, examines Mansour. <laughs> Uh, Mansour's uncle, who's made the journey with him, explains he was wounded last year in a Saudi airstrike. <laughs> Dr. Ani tells Mansour and his <laughs> uncle he can help. <laughs> Dr. Ani has worked at the hospital for 10 years. In Iraq, he treated hundreds of casualties from Al-Qaeda bombs until he couldn't cope anymore. Once I saw a lady who was lying down comfortably in the, on, the, on, the, on the couch. When I exposed her lower limbs, her lower limbs were burned up to the bone. On the other side of the emergency room, I had lost a a young man with a small shot nail passed through the chest. During that time, I said, that's it. I'm fed up. I'm full. And how do you feel about the fact that there is a whole generation that will be impacted by, by war? It might generate murderers, thieves, looters, criminals. So nobody can predict. But he says, at least in this hospital, they have specialist facilities to help repair damaged lives. 
He's about to operate on a Yemeni teenager called Ashraf. Ashraf's leg was shattered in a Saudi airstrike on a market in Daez that also killed his childhood friend, Habib. Dr. Ali is getting ready for Ashraf's surgery. He's so nervous, he's shaking on the surgical table. It's a difficult thing. He's here without his parents or any source of comfort. This guy has a, a, a severe penetrating injury. This is the knee joint. As you can see, the whole configuration of the lower femur is distorted. The best way is to abolish this joint space and make them as a single bone. Okay. If the operation goes well, Ashraf will have more surgery to create an artificial knee joint so that he can walk again. But Ashraf's mobility will always be limited. Done. Done? How do you feel when you see what one missile, one airstrike, one bomb can do to someone? Uh, definitely I feel sorry. And uh, uh, sometimes I start to cry when I see some such incidents. I think it will take a long time, if not all of his remaining life, to heal physically and uh, psychologically from this trauma. I'm really shocked to hear Dr. Ali say that Ashraf will spend the rest of his life trying to walk normally. He was very adamant that he was ready to get back on track, to, to walk, to go back to school. And I don't think that he even knows how long it will take. Today, for the first time since he was wounded, Bilal is going to put weight on his injured leg a crucial stage in learning to walk again. Sejdi's warned Bilal that it's going to hurt. But he can't continue. We go to the cafe while Bilal recovers. Every week, the surgeons make a final decision on who will be admitted next. It's a really intense and difficult decision, considering the thousands of people across the region that could use surgical treatment, and the fact that this is the only hospital in the Middle East that delivers free reconstructive surgery. The surgeons are focused on finding patients that operations and rehabilitation will help the most. The first case is an Iraqi girl whose leg was blown off by a landmine while escaping ISIS in Kirkuk province. She's four years old and she has a right below amputation. 
Ouais, j'ai fait ici. Et une meilleure. Un dater. Ça m'a dit. Possible to have a video clip while using the prosthesis and all the tennis. The surgeons reject her until there's more information that proves they can make a difference. Next is a three-year-old Syrian girl. Function as well, she's using the hands very good, painlessly. This young patient is also passed over. When they decide they can help a patient with time-sensitive cases, they want to know they can travel quickly. He has passport or not? Ah. Okay, bring him. There are 186 beds and thousands of possible patients. One patient who wasn't on the shortlist is Abid, the father from Mosul who needs treatment as soon as possible. In Khazid camp in northern Iraq, I find he's still not managed to get the x-ray that's essential before his file can be referred. He tells me security have refused to let him leave the camp at all. Bureaucracy and fear of ISIS infiltrators mean refugees are often stopped. فرحت تصعد بالكوستر ما خلاني بالكوستر صعد. يعني أقول الجزء راح تصير إيدي خايسة يعني بعد ما ما بيها أمل. Abid's trying a new tactic to be allowed out for an X-ray. He's going to the office of an NGO called International Medical Corps. He thinks they have the power to write him a permit for the camp guards. We're not let in, but we can eavesdrop, and it's good news. I lend him my mobile to call Dr. Rashid from MSF. As soon as she has his x-ray, she says she'll put his case in front of the surgeons in Jordan. يعني كم يوم طولي مثلاً ترد لي الجواب يوم تروح على يعني بين بين أسبوع عشر أيام أسبوع عشر أيام إن شاء الله مشكور دكتورة يا أهلا وسهلا أنا أنا تعوري حيل يعني إنه أحس إنه تعالج والله يعني أحس إنه تعالج his family is over the moon but Abid is still worried والله صدقهم ليش ما صدقهم بس يعني إذا ما أطلع ما ما أرتاح. لا عمان. لو قطع لك مشكلة أردن. أطير بلا طيارة. Two days later, after we left Abid, he tried to leave the camp to get his X-ray. International Medical Corps told us that camp security wouldn't let him pass and they couldn't interfere. Hey, hey, تعال, تعال. تعال. Back in Amman, Bilal's friend Mu'min, also from Yemen, has come to see him. He tells us Bilal has girl problems. <laughs> His girlfriend in Yemen is angry with him for sharing her photo without permission. Bilal needs all the emotional support he can get. If he's to walk unaided again, he must abandon his walking frame. That means using crutches for the first time. Okay. 
It's painful, but it's vital if he's to build up muscles that he'll need to walk. This is a huge moment. I think he's going to make it. He's smart even with his head injury. And with time, when you see himself, he's improving it a little bit. He'll be like more focused and more concentrated in the physique. And do you think it's possible that he could actually start to walk? Yeah, he, is, he will. He will. He will so, 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 and you will see him walking. The staff here have already helped nearly 5,000 badly injured people. Many are children and teenagers from a generation that has known only war. More will soon arrive, casualties from the battles being fought at this very moment. <laughs> On our last day in the hospital, Bilal does something that amazes us. He writes a poem to send to his girlfriend. He's come to this hospital to have the chance to walk again. But it seems it's a place that's also allowing his brain to start to heal. He sends the poem to his girlfriend in Yemen. It's beautiful. <laughs> In the last year, there's been a sharp increase in civilian casualties from Western-supported airstrikes in Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. Only a few of the wounded will get the surgery and rehabilitation they need. Abid is still trapped in the refugee camp in northern Iraq. The time to operate on his arm and allow him to use his hand again has passed. Thanks for watching this Unreported World episode. Click the logo to subscribe for more award-winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.